Hi and welcome everyone, I'm Gavin Lon. So, is Blazer better than Next.js? Spoiler alert, yes it is! Okay, okay, as you know, I have a bias towards C Sharp and Blazor, but let's go through a somewhat objective comparison between these two fantastic web development frameworks step by step. So let's start with a brief overview of Next.js, and then we can do a quick recap of what we know about Blazor. Next.js is an open source web development framework created by the private company Vercel. It allows developers to create React-based web applications. With Next.js, you can leverage client-side rendering for certain components, as well as leverage server-side rendering, or SSR, for other components within the same Next.js project. Next.js also provides the ability for static website generation. It was initially released on the 25th of October 2016. So with Next.js, you are able to provide fast responsive component-based UIs that can leverage the state management and lifecycle hooks that are used frequently within React applications. You are able to leverage server-side rendering or SSR or client-side rendering for your Next.js components. User interactivity efficiency is enabled through the leveraging of React-style functionality and the inherent benefits like super-fast load times and better SEO or search engine optimization can be leveraged through server-side rendering. You can also pre-render your entire website through static website generation. This means that your website will be super fast. With static website generation, web pages requested from the relevant site do not need to be rendered upon request because, of course, they are already rendered. Blazor is a free open source web framework and enables developers to use C-sharp and HTML to create component-based UIs for the web. It is being developed by Microsoft and was first released in 2018. At the time of creating this video, .NET 7 is the latest stable release of .NET. With .NET 7, you can leverage two technologies, which are denoted by two disparate project templates, namely Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly. These two technologies can both be used for creating super-fast UI component-based responsiveness on the web. So, user interactivity is super fast and smooth with Blazor, where only the part of the web page that needs to change is updated appropriately in the browser, which means the entire web page does not need to be refreshed every time changes need to be made to the web page due to a user interacting with that web page. This results in a super fast and smooth UX user experience. The fundamental difference between Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly is that with Blazor WebAssembly, the .NET libraries and code libraries are downloaded to the browser and run within the browser on a technology known as WebAssembly. So the C-sharp code for a Blazor WebAssembly application is in effect run within the browser. With Blazor Server, the C-sharp code logic is run on the server. When, for example, a change is made to a web page through a user interacting with that web page, the change is calculated on the server and pushed down to the browser via a signal R connection. The appropriate change is then updated within the user's browser without the need for the entire web page to be refreshed. So with Blazor Server, a persistent signal R connection is maintained between client and server and the C-sharp code logic runs on the server. With Blazor WebAssembly, the relevant runtime DLLs and code DLLs written in C-sharp are downloaded to the browser and run within the browser on a technology known as WebAssembly. With the release of .NET 8, due to be released this month, November 2023, server-side rendering, or SSR, will be available for Blazor applications. This will mean that Blazor applications, through server-side rendering, can benefit from super-fast initial load times, and better SEO, search engine optimization. Note that static website generation will not be released with .NET 8, but Microsoft intends to make this functionality available in subsequent releases of .NET. With the release of .NET 8, Blazor WebAssembly components, Blazor Server components, and server-side rendering, or SSR, can be leveraged from within one project. 
So the developer no longer needs to choose between Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server project types, one project template type, namely Blazor Web App, where all Blazor features can be leveraged from within one project derived from this new project template shipped with .NET 8. So in my opinion, with the release of .NET 8, Blazor is becoming a highly competitive web framework when compared to a great web framework like Next.js. The one benefit that Blazor is missing, even with the release of .NET 8, is static website generation, which is a great feature to leverage for websites that don't rely on dynamically generated output. So let's look at the similarities between these two technologies. Next.js and Blazor are both open source free web development frameworks. With Next.js, server-side rendering or SSR is available, and with the release of .NET 8, server-side rendering or SSR can also be leveraged for Blazor applications. With both Blazor and Next.js, client-side rendering can be leveraged. With both Blazor and Next.js, you can leverage client-side rendering and server-side rendering from within the same project. Both technologies use a component-based architecture where the UI can be split up into self-contained units called components. With Next.js and Blazor, both front-end and back-end development can be done using one technology. This is not the case, for example, with React, where it is great for the development of sophisticated complex UIs, but for a full-stack web application, where you are using React for the front-end functionality, you'll still need to use another technology, like for example Node.js and JavaScript or .NET and C Sharp to develop the backend functionality. Both Blazor and Next.js currently have fairly small community support when compared to the community support available for React developers. This is also true for the number of people skilled as Blazor and Next.js developers. The number of, for example, proficient React developers is far greater. Both technologies can leverage type safety. Even though JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, TypeScript is supported in Next.js applications, which means compile time checks can be made regarding data types before the release of a Next.js application into production. With Blazor, c -sharp is a statically typed language, and the c -sharp compiler checks that type-related issues are flagged before the Blazor application is released into the production environment. So let's look at the differences between these two technologies. The most notable differences, in my opinion, are as follows. The most obvious difference between these two technologies is that Blazor is c -sharp and .NET based, whereas Next.js is JavaScript and Node.js based. As already discussed, both technologies have fairly small community support at present, but Blazor has the benefit of heavy investment from Microsoft. There is arguably more comprehensive documentation and learning material available for Blazor than for Next.js at present. Blazor uses Razor files that are a mix between c -sharp and HTML for the expression of self-contained UI components. Next.js uses JSX for this purpose in much the same way that React applications use JSX for the expression of self-contained UI components. JSX stands for JavaScript XML. The XML allows for developers to use HTML tags to represent their counterpart HTML tags that are actually rendered within the browser, and JavaScript is used for dynamic behavioral code logic, so that where appropriate, a component's output can be created based on predefined conditions. Static website generation is provided with Next.js. Even with the release of .NET 8, Blazor cannot be used for static website generation. However, as discussed, Microsoft intends to make static website generation available in subsequent releases of .NET. So why would you choose Blazor over Next.js? Or why would you choose Next.js over Blazor? Prevailing skill sets in your organization. So, if for example your organization already has a team of experienced React developers, Next.js would be a logical choice because Next.js is a React-based web framework, so the learning curve will be a lot less steep than if your team were to learn Blazor. 
Even if you have more vanilla JavaScript developers in your company than .NET and C-sharp developers, Next.js would probably be a better choice, simply because the learning curve is less steep. In these cases, it is going to be far more cost-effective and time-efficient to develop your web application using Next.js. Conversely, if your organization has more C-sharp and .NET skills available, Blazor would be the best option. Project requirements. Performance may be your criteria. Blazor WebAssembly components, for example, can run within the browser at almost native speeds due to a technology called WebAssembly. So if there is a requirement for your components to perform computationally intensive tasks, Blazor may be a great choice for this purpose. With Next.js, I believe dynamic routing is not so easy to achieve. So if you have a requirement where complex dynamic routing needs to be achieved, Blazor might be a better choice than Next.js. If on the other hand, you have a requirement for static website generation, this functionality is not yet available in Blazor, so Next.js is a clear choice in this scenario. For aspiring web developers, if an individual is just starting out as a web developer and is wondering whether to learn Blazor or Next.js, perhaps salary could be your main criteria. To help with your decision of which of these technologies to learn, you could simply research salaries for Blazor and Next.js developers paid by companies near and around the area in which you live. Perhaps it just comes down to personal preference. You just prefer the way code looks in one of these technologies. Whatever the case may be, even though I have a bias toward .NET, c -sharp, and Blazor, I believe you cannot go wrong with learning Next.js. If you want to learn Next.js, it may be best to gain at least some foundational knowledge of React. I've included a link in the description of this video to a free React for Beginners course. So once again, we have compared two excellent You're technologies. Tearing me apart. What? So please let me know in the comments section which of these technologies you prefer and why. Please also let me know if there are two particular technologies you'd like me to compare in an upcoming video. Your recommendations will of course be greatly appreciated. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. I've recently joined X, formerly Twitter, so it would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Digital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.